A computation is literally a calculation, and in the English language until the very late 19th century, a computer was a person who carried out computations, mathematical calculations. There were calculators and calculating machines long before there were computers, and depending on what you count as a device or a machine, you can easily go back 5,000 years in history, where you'll find the abacus, for example. But while the use of the word computer to mean a calculating machine can be traced back as far as 1897, the first computers were actually referred to as Turing machines after the English mathematician, logician and pioneering computer scientist Alan Turing, whom we encounter repeatedly in this MOOC and in the Atlas it is based on. So early computers were programmable calculators and for several decades they really did nothing other than churn numbers. Not only was there no need, therefore, in the beginning for much of an interface, there also wasn't much need for words, since you would not give the computer anything to do other than what it is primarily there to do, to compute. You would then take the computations and enter them into your report or your table or your presentation, which would be an actual physical document or slideshow of pictures, for example, or a series of acetate foils, and that was all that was required. The problem this soon presented was, of course, that you do not need to go far with numbers before you chance upon words. Labels, categories, product ranges, shipping destinations, addresses, descriptions, tags, instructions. The moment you stray from pure mathematics into the world of things and people, you start using terminology. And so it was not long before people saw a need for computing with text. The first ones to do so were people in business, thus acting as a principal and powerful commercial driver for the advancement of the technology. By now, we are in the mid to late 1970s, and around this time computing becomes interesting also to the construction industry and therefore by extension to architects. Because now it is possible to do projections, for example of material and labour costs, as automated processes, and while hardly anybody yet expects computers to work as presentational tools, the idea of formatting numbers and text in a sensible and intelligible way already becomes relevant. But there is still, at this point, a clear division of labour between the person who does data processing and the person who uses that data and makes it presentable. Data processor is a job, and one on which the usefulness of the company's computer hinges directly. There then comes a fascinating interlude of the electronic typewriter and what is known as the QWERTY inertia, which we don't have time to go into here, but which you can read up on in the Atlas. And similarly, the whole story relating to the encoding of letters is something we cover there, but not here, because in this unit of our MOOC, we want to concentrate more on the perhaps more immediately applicable and therefore obviously relevant area of typography and layout. In other words, design with text. And this becomes interesting for the non-specialist professional, that is the professional who is not a specialist graphic designer or typographer, such as the architect, in the 1980s when processing speeds, data storage, and the graphic user interface, GUI, make their breakthroughs first, of course, with the prosumer level Macintosh computer, coinciding pretty much with printers and print drivers that can handle WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. Now, with Adobe's portable document format, the today omnipresent PDF, you can reliably design your page and print it out or send it as a file, knowing it will look exactly what you wanted it to look like on the recipient screen or even once they have printed it out themselves. Now, the time and the technology is ready for 
desktop publishing. More or less everything we talk about in this unit of our MOOC, in the broader sense, falls under this heading, which otherwise, and maybe more accurately, since it really has not had to happen on a desktop for several decades now, should be known as do-it-yourself publishing. There is no special irony in the fact that an art school founded in Weimar in 1919 by German architect Walter Gropius with a name that literally translates as House of Building or House of Construction and which soon became synonymous with an entire architecture and art movement did not at first have an architecture department. The whole idea of Bauhaus was to bring together all art forms and disciplines and usher in an era of the Gesamtkunstwerk, the complete and completely integrated work of art in which disciplines were indistinguishable, if nothing other than in terms of prominence and priority. Craft, design and architecture were equal elements in an approach that also, and readily, encompassed graphic design and layout of posters, pamphlets, brochures, magazines and proposals. It is perhaps unsurprising then that it is here, at this juncture, that our topic starts to become really relevant to architects from the point onwards where anyone with some aptitude can go about designing pages on their computer without having to call on a third party expert. The page we think of it normally as paper, but it can be a foil, it can be a projection slide, it can be a wall onto which we are going to print, or a floor, now is the canvas, and on it we arrange, today by computer, just as a hundred years ago by manual means, the elements that make up our design. Text, headlines, titles, captions, legends, descriptions, narrations, dialogue, from single words to sentences or phrases to paragraphs, graphics, lines, curves, frames, boxes, circles, bullets, icons, and images, photographs, drawings, scans, plans, models. These are the components we have at our disposal to express ourselves and to present our architecture in two dimensions, be that when we talk about it before it is realized or after it has been built or while it is in the process of being created. And how to work with these elements successfully, that is what we will be looking at in some detail in this unit of our MOOC.